I spill my drink! As a game portraying a very tense period of fictional human evolution, Deus Ex Mankind Divided keeps its main focus on the interactions that are happening between the organizations and corporations modeled in this latest iteration of the Deus Ex universe. The best part of the game is that you will have a myriad chance to express sophisticated positions on the issues presented, and these evaluations won't even really be hampered to any degree by the fact of how they are based on largely binary dynamics that are eager to collide. It is not to say that there is a lack of decent characterization for the featured actors altogether, but it is safe to say that each and every character on display is existent solely in the context of the tensions presented in the game world, while their personality portrayals show various degrees of convince power, ranging from highly forgettable, I'm looking at you, what's love and Victor and Vega, to very decent. The key turmoils that shape this world today all boil down to the augmentation anti-catharsis that took place as the memorable conclusion of the previous installment, as half if not more of the planet population is now horrified by the augmented people of today. The hostility between the set of people now deemed as naturals and between the augmented reaches a boiling point. It is common that the augmented are treated as if not having human rights, and many of them display increasing amount of desperation in a world that largely rejects them as if a natural body would combat an implant, taken for an invader of traditional norms and assumed optimal conduct. Hello. Get away. I just wanted to... I don't want to hear it. No. Uh. Hello. What? What? Leave me alone. Hello. Get lost, hands up. More than a few around. This is a normal day in the metro, folks. This is how we roll here. As such, Mankind Divided displays the conflict, but largely and even smartly refrains from committing to any moral position from which to offer a pronounced take on the fictional world, and the game does not even exhibit any trepidation to spoon-feed you a relevant central comment on its universe. The reason of this pseudo-reluctance is deliberate. Mankind Divided indeed gives you a divided world, but it is up to you to express yourself in it. It is up to you to form that comment on it. And there is a hidden question concealed throughout. Can you remain human in a world so extremely divided? Or do you even have any plans to remain human at all? Or is the fear justified? Are you the monster some will automatically perceive you as? This game will ask these questions throughout, which is the most optimal part of the experience. The title has discovered mechanic in place, and it lets you to be human under all circumstances, regardless of the amount of augmentations you sport. And sure enough, you can play as Mr. Cyber Psychosis as well. In other words, apt opportunities will be presented to express your true self in this divided world, and this fact is the best element of the whole game. The playground is set and is realized with superb exigency. And remember, the world you arrive to is organically dependent on this somewhat artificial division between naturals and augs, and the game has little to no intention of adding anything on top of the notion that the world displayed indeed is very, very, very divided. Other than that, we have little intel. But Mankind Divided gives you clever moral dilemmas throughout, and the decisions you will have to make are never of shades of black and white. It gets even better. Hard decisions will have to be made, inevitably. On some occasion, mankind asks you to commit to a decision, and you will have to take the consequences of said decision at face value. In this game, you won't have the chance to take care of everything you would prefer, as the flow of time is modeled by the game in the sense that once you commit to a mission, the other mission that you consequently chose to neglect will yield its own results, often with dramatic conclusions. Heck, the game is not even reluctant to invite you on a guilt trip from time to time. 
Many games claim that your decisions have consequences, but not many titles can say about themselves that their decision spaces can influence the narrative as well. The case is not as such with mankind, as your choices will influence the narrative and all paths are worked out and realized. A big step towards a very intriguing direction. And hopefully the next Deus Ex game will feature even more of this method. But wait, does this game contain any useful tips for killing large groups of people? Not particularly. As a valuable asset to a counter-terrorism organization, your avatar is within the natural and sensible constraints to operate within this capacity, and the game starts out with robust enough initial motivators to make your mindset sink in with that of the protagonist. And, therefore, the actions you take emerge highly consistent with those expectable from the avatar. Better yet, the most significant battles are still fought with intelligence and social skills. You're jumping to conclusions again, Montag. You need to believe what I'm telling you about Daria. And you need to let me leave here, so we can both continue looking for the answers we need. Turn that shit off! I've been a cop for 35 years. You don't think I can spot someone trying to pull that social augmentation crap on me? I swear to God, another false move like that and I will shoot you! Luckily, the mankind of mankind still is eager to be tampered with, especially in this divided form. Throughout the game, the narrative takes you through a classically convoluted Deus Ex plot filled with quasi-paranoid questioning of who and why you should trust, who you could trust at all, and what is the merit and value, if any, in the operation of any given organization on display. About 75% of the game takes place in Prague. Here comes an apology for using the term HOBOLOGY. The realization level of the environment's actors and props is extremely top of the heat. It is easy to see that the developers deeply care about this game. Lore building is abundant and mainly is expressed as an optimum combination of your own environmental experience, spiced even further up by various mid-frequency details like TV and radio shows and news tablets detailing the latest happenings in the world while the passive NPCs primarily showcase social commentary on the level of the individual. I used to want to go full body augmentation like you. How's oh, that been working out for you? Wow, you look like a lot of paperwork. I worked for the State Department during the day, and during the night, I tried to undo it all again. Okay. Talk about it. All dark and augmented. I recognize you. I appreciate what you've done. Each passive NPC will have two statements to tell you, but their number is big enough as to make sure that you will be immersed into the intended mood and political climate they seek to convey. The facial expressions sometimes are very, very effective. The lore has tremendous role in your inventory too. You can inspect all inventory items up close and read all about their function and origin, which is a prime example of very meticulous and soulful world building. The city is a relative safe haven of your operations most of the time, jam packed with side quests that are accessible via merely prowling around in the apartments of other people and checking the contents of their computer. 
This segment showcases how this game handles tension. He's punk. I never saw a man try harder to look like he came up from the streets. Ironic. Monique. He's got the ink. He's done time. Time in some Moscow boutique. Think he got that shit on his legs in prison? Radich made the call. You want to talk to Radich about who he recruits? Good luck. Ah. If he wants posers, my hometown is full of them. You know the deal. Some guys are for doing the shooting, and some are for getting shot. Stuck cleaning the tub in '85. Getting sick. Oh, what? Oh. Rather be fucked. <laughs> So you too piss with your weapon concealed. Painkillers. Disgusting. This segment was rather typical of the game. Go in and go out undetected. Harvest the scenery for valuable loot. Rinse and repeat. Courtesy of a somewhat drooling and super forgiving AI, combined with the built-in surveillance capabilities of your avatar, it is hard not to feel like you own this world and can do anything in it, which is all the more reason to take either good care of it, or to litter it with your psychotic presence. Lizard man my ass. With great power consumption comes a great demand for biocells. Peaceful and stone traditional burglary aside, you will see a healthy amount of scripted sequences too that will similarly lead you to optional side quests. Taking those is good for your health, literally, not to mention your praxis. The protagonist has a rich bank of augmentations waiting to be unlocked and unleashed, and you can customize him to a great degree to best suit your playing style. More on those later. Of course, nothing is as obnoxious as is hacking in this game. I guarantee you that not one person on this planet enjoys the hacking minigame of Deus Ex Mankind Divided. It is a chance-based affair and every single player on the planet makes a quick save before attempting a hack and reloads until the preferable outcome is achieved. Bleh. Anomaly detected. Access granted. Augmentations reveal a well thought out base balance between covert op specific and combat specific abilities, and it is entirely possible to build a cyber ninja, a cyber tank, or both out of yourself. It will take quite a big chunk of time before realizing the somewhat protocolic nature of the environment. There are the city hops, there are the apartments, which happen to be empty 95% of the time. And there are separate main missions with equally super complex layouts, occupying multiple layers of environment. These are the sections that will give you the most amount of time exploring, uh, excluding the city of course, and you will have to be very insistent if to claim you have seen every corner and every secret of a given locale. Take a peek to the right, move that vending machine to the left, and there you see a vent shaft. And you know about the relation between your protagonist and vent shafts. Uh, let's not even get into this. Pun intended. As noted in the introduction, the game sees you in the middle of colliding organizations amidst tides of terror. 
This man is your protagonist. Right now, he is a special agent of the Interpol. But when he pops on those sunglasses, baby, he is Adam Johnson. Easily one of my most favorite power fantasies ever. The main gameplay mechanics do not seek to deviate all too much from those found in the previous installment. Mankind is a stealth game at heart, with one super optimal addendum. The title will not punish nor judge you for any action you take. The game is indifferent instead and merely serves as the expressor of the consequences you provoke in its universe. The facade is beautiful, but the number of states the game is cognizant of is binary at best. Make no mistake, from a mechanical point of view, Mankind is a deeply static game and, excluding the narrative, Almost all possible gameplay interactions arise from the momentary result of how the given environment relates to you. If the area features hostiles, then you will have the chance to play around with the mechanics. But in a neutral area, your relevant decision space is constrained to the looting of valuables and you can take part in one-sided static micro-conversations with NPCs, in which you are the listener. But this, as we have seen, is more of a part of the lore building. Mankind does not do too great of a job whenever it has to model any type of commotion in a neutral area. If you as much as throw a plush animal at someone, the entire city block will freak out and state police will be on your ass with Robocop great super toys. It isn't even a result of sloppiness on the developer's part, mind us. It's just that the economics and sophistication level of the modeled elements aren't at all prepared to deliver relevance outside the fleshed out narrative pathways. That wasn't intended as a criticism, by the way. All in all, the game prefers to be undisturbed whenever it is in a neutral state. Where? When? Don't give me that crap! I need safe passage around this city. Yes, that's what I'm trying to tell you. The city's in lockdown, I get it, but... I'm in the middle of a level one threat investigation here. You do understand we are trying to stop terrorists here. I understand that, but I have agents scattered around this city. La -la 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 -la. Welcome to Palisade. We get few augmented clients and visitors, sir. Doesn't look like it did. People don't let little things like terrorism or social injustice get in the way of their drinking and debauchery. Listen to that garbage. What does it feel like to play mankind? You spend the majority of your time evading hostiles by making use of covers, provided you are adamant at going through a level unnoticed. Essentially, like a proper Deus Ex title, Mankind is a super spy simulator, but maybe a little too polite and caring for the player at that. If you exhibit but a minimum degree of carefulness, it is not hard to evade anyone. And even if you find yourself in a risky situation, you have all the tools in the world to discard the non-essential non-lethally. So the title is a power fantasy in which the player avatar is extremely OP or overpowered. And when the game gets out of its way to pressure you via throwing relevant surges of hostiles around you, then it is either a matter of discarding them methodically, or you can go Rambo from time to time, as interestingly enough, the more enemy a map features, the more the game reveals the boundaries of the stylistic constraints of the underlying mechanics. So why even bother sneaking between a gazillion of psychopathic murderers when the world won't lose an iota of peace if you put them to sleep for the time being? Make sure to show respect.
suspect. This table's naturals only. Don't wait for an invitation, you'll rust. If I had feelings, I would be offended. I think you're a bad omen. What gave me away? I think everything's a bad omen. Although there are no powers in effect to prevent you from playing in a lethal style, going lethal is kind of barbaric and chaotic here, unless you take the time to inspect petrol routes of enemies in an effort to set traps for them. But with said effort under your belt, you could as well sneak around. The gameplay of Mankind is not particularly profitable to take part in anyway, as the title never once forces you to do so, and being fired upon is a clear indication that you were not attentive or discreet enough. But if you're going in there to declare a radical verdict, still you will be able to explore the environment in peace, right after discarding non-essentials littering the field, which for some reincarnation of Jensen probably is just another day at someone else's office. The gunplay is massively cover-based. And the AI seems a bit more competent during combat, as hostiles will do their best to flank you. Still, the best part of any and all gunfights is to avoid them altogether. This game is so eager to let you have fun with its mechanics. The fundamental and classic premise of a Deus Ex game is to be at places you're not supposed to be at, and claiming all data in the process pertinent to that place, even as a ghost who never gets noticed, or as Arnold, with the exception of not even being in the need of reassuring anyone that you will be coming back, as it is quite evident that you won't leave until you get what you want. The amount of time you can spend doing relevant things per location is considerable, given the info-filled nature of the explorable spaces. The information will primarily come to you in the form of emails you read on computers you hack, and rest assured that 9 out of 10 people is eager to mention an area-specific code in the context of that damned air conditioner that once again exhibits signs of malfunctioning. You get the drill. Or Hi, I left your mother in the wardrobe. The code for her medication locker is 045 uh, something, remember? Granted, this old school method of content generation still can deliver moments of intrigue and accomplishment, but mankind does not get out of its way to introduce fresh dynamics that spice up these stone traditional game loop tropes. While the hacking minigame itself is quite obnoxious this time, because it is largely built on chance, it is all the more rewarding to commit a successful hack. But don't expect to be disturbed while you go covert in a neutral area. These optional spaces are dead in the sense that their whole purpose is to give you loot rewards for even taking the time to check them out. But not much is happening in them. Zero, more precisely. In many ways, Deus Ex Mankind Divided emerges theoretically successful at realizing the classic dream of original Deus Ex designer War Inspector. War Inspector. Mr. Spector said he would be interested in simulating a small city block, and Mankind seems like a resonance, a pingback to this very dream. But it bears mentioning that the number of relevant interactions you could make in the neutral city world is largely limited to the hacking of computers, reading the emails and stealing the beer of strangers. I don't know which one is more evil. As such, with the mere act of modeling the places required to simulate, Mankind definitely draws a blueprint of basics of how the simulation of a city block could, should start. But it does not really do anything with it, unfortunately. We are yet to see any type of emergent gameplay mechanics the original Deus Ex was known for. War Inspector is reported to tinker with someone called Shodan. Heard anything about that, Johnson? Heard that somewhere, yeah. Documentation, please. 
Here, enjoy. Smart ass. ID check BH-847. I see. Thanks. You must think you're something special, eh? Get the hell out of here! I've already checked your papers. You volunteering for a more thorough search? Get out of here! How about a little trivia, Jensen? Forget it. I'm just tired. Not getting much rest lately. Let's give the question to the viewer instead, then. No hard feelings, what is right? the one thing that Adam Jensen never does? The answer is featured at the very, very imminent end of this review. Thank you for watching, by the way. Adam Jensen never smiles. Sorry for pointing that out, Adam. Don't sweat it. I'm assuming you had a good reason. Now get out of my house, Jensen. I will buy you beer.